Hello everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at the Paper Trail gem. This is sort of a companion to the audited gem that we did the other day, where you could leave yourself with an audit trail in your application when users modify records of various types. So maybe you have like posts, you have a user that changes the title on a post, you can then see which user did that and when it occurred. Uh, maybe you have admins that are using the pretender gem we covered and you want to see when an admin is pretending to be another user, when they're modifying stuff on that user's account. You want to keep a record of that in the database so that you can make sure that your admins are doing what they're supposed to be doing and not that they're, you know, going rogue. That's where a lot of these gems help. So paper trail and audited do similar things. Um, paper trail has quite a few pieces of functionality that I probably can't do justice in covering in this video. So I'm going to cover the basics and hopefully give you some semblance of, of inspiration to move on with it yourself. The, uh, the main idea is, and they'll hopefully cover it here. Um, you can track things, but you're going to want to sort of limit what you would like to track because the more you track, the more you store, the more storage you use, the more that'll hurt performance, et cetera, scaling costs, you know. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna set up something very simple. I'll show you some of the options you can do, and then I highly encourage you to look through the readme as you go forward. So we're just gonna go ahead and create a new Rails project. We'll say Rails new video, and then I'll go ahead and CD into it and run a code dot. Now this uh, readme here is incredibly detailed. There's a whole bunch of stuff you can do. Uh, there's tons of information on, you know, what you can exclude, how to exclude it and how to set up various scenarios and when it thinks you, you should, right? In our case, what we're going to do is just really quick, create our basic demo app that we usually do. So we'll do a bundle add device, and we'll also add the paper trail gem while we're here. That should work just fine. Uh, and then what we can do is run a uh, rails g device colon install command. We can then do a rails g device user command. Then we can do our rails g scaffold for a post with a title and a body of type text. It'll add that. And then let's do a rails g migration where we can add the user to our posts using a user colon references. We're doing this so we don't have to change all of the forms to make sure that the, and the, like the controllers to make sure the users are added properly. So we'll do that. Next, let's come over to our VS code. Let's come into our config and our routes.rb. In here, we're just gonna set the root to be the post controller index action because it makes our life a little easier later. And then let's come up to our app, our controllers and our post controller. And then here we can do a before action where we say authenticate user except for the index and the show just like that and then we can come down here to our create and we can merge the post params with the current user.id because we're going to be logged in thanks to this authenticate user whenever we get to the create action so that takes care of that uh, now that we have all of those let's come into our models and our post.rb because we want to say this belongs to our user and then our user should has many posts something like that. Just setting up uh, something very simple that we can then use to uh, test our application with. So let's do a rails db colon migrate command real quick. And then we can do a rails s and come over to localhost port 3000 real fast. And then we are at the root of our application. Now that we're here, let's go ahead and let's add what we usually add, which is our uh, sign in sign up stuff. So let's come over here to posts and our post index page. And let's just do a Render for shared slash, I don't know, let's just say sessions, something like that. And then we can come over to our views, right click new folder. We'll call this shared. And then inside of shared, we can create a new file and call this underscore sessions.html.erb. And then we can paste something like this in where it just tells you who the current user is. It gives you a sign out link that uses data turbo method delete because we're using Rails 7. And then we have our edit, sign up and sign in paths here as well. So that takes care of all that. We can then come over to our posts and we have our sign up button. So let's go ahead and let's sign up with dean at example.com and a password of password, just like that. And now we can take a look at how to uh, actually add paper trail. Now in the audited gem, I did cover using admin accounts for this. In this case, we're just gonna be using a basic account because 
you can kind of just go watch the audited video if you want to set that up. Uh, but basically you just add an enum, you generate a migration that says your role is of type integer. You put your enum into your user um, model. And then from there you can set up like a whole dashboard. But let's go ahead and let's add the paper trail. So we have in our gem file, if we scroll down to the bottom, we have paper trail added. It does give us a migration here uh, somewhere right here. I could not get the full migration to work. If I try to run this, uh, the without changes here was, uh, or with changes was not working. So of course we backspace this and we just run a paper trail install just like that. And then we can do a DB migrate again to migrate our database. We can then do a rails S. And now if we try to test this, we can come over here and do a new post. And you'll see that this will only do one create action where we insert into the post. So that's still not working. What we need to do is we need it to, um, we need to create a uh, list of versions whenever we do a change or whenever we create something. The way we can do this is by saying has paper trail on whichever model we would like. So in this case, because we're trying to test the post creation, it makes sense to put this in the post itself. So we'll say the post has paper trail. We can then come over here We can go back to posts, do a new post. And if we hit enter here and scroll down, we can do another test and case, click create. And then if we scroll up, you'll see there's now two green texts that tells us something was created. First is the creation of the, the post, and then there's the uh, insertion into versions, where it tells us the item type was a post, the item ID was two, because it's the post ID of two. It was a create event, the whodunit is nil, the object is nil, and the created ad is here. So what does that tell us? Well, if we stop our server and come to a Rails C, we can do a post equals post.last, and then we can do a post dot uh, versions, which gives us all of our versions back. And here's our version object. You can then do a post dot versions dot last, which will give us just the last one. Or you can see the item type, the item ID, the event, etc. But this who done it is interesting. What does this mean? Well, this is just a little bit cute way of saying who was the person that edited this. And the way you can do that is uh, you can set it up with a before action to set the paper trail who done it this will automatically detect if you're using a current user method. So we can come up to our controllers and our application controller, and we can add this before action. And now if we run a Rails S, we can come in here and we can refresh, come back to posts, do a new post and say, hello uh, world, click create post. And now if we stop our server and run a Rails C, we can do a post equals post.last. Then we can do a post.versions.last where we can see the who done it, which means of course you can do last dot who done it, which will give you that one. And then you could do a user equals user dot find by this ID, which gives you that user account right here. So that's how you could uh, convert this into an actual user object to figure out who was the person that edited a specific account, right? But of course you have the ID so you can do all of this manually. That part's not the hard part. This is pretty, um, it's a pretty like low level or high level view of sort of how this works. Again, there's so much here that you could, you know, configure however you want. They also give you the option to like set the scopes where you can change like how things are ordered for your version. So maybe you want to see like the newest version first, because right now what's going to happen is if we run a Rails S we can come in here, we can edit this post, say hello to click update, stop our server, run a Rails C, and then we can do a post equals post.last and a post.versions. You'll see that this one is currently going to list you the oldest ones first, and then the newest ones will be down at the bottom. So you might want to set up a scope like this where you, um, you have the scope set up. So it orders with the uh, newest stuff towards the top. Now there's a whole bunch of other stuff you can do. They have their entire API documented and all of the configuration stuff. So again, this is one of those gems. Sometimes I can cover a lot of what they do. Uh, in a quick little video, but this is one of the ones where I highly suggest just taking the time reading through this, because if you configure it properly, your applications will have a really useful trail that you can follow uh, for, you know, 
managing um, a, sort of like a, a chain of trust where you know that these people are doing what they claim to be doing if they're admins in your in your uh, server or you can say this seems like weird behavior you know Jim is normally only online from eight to five each day uh, but his account is on at three in the morning maybe his account's been compromised you go check you see that the IP logged in from somewhere else and that's another way where you can sort of do these uh, these audits occasionally just by looking at like your list of, of paper trail edits if you run into something weird but that's going to do it for this one. I can do a follow up or two on paper trail specifically for some of the more uh, advanced features. But I thought this would be a good intro just to get you aware that there is an alternative to audited. There's a lot here. Uh, it's really ultimately whatever you want to get out of it. But that's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I'm going to go back to playing Baldur's Gate and sleeping and hopefully I will see you in the next one.